Hello and welcome to this Better Leaders show, LinkedIn live show today. And today I'm again talking to Lydia. Welcome, Lydia. Hi. And Lydia Schmel. And um, in, partly because I, I have to be honest, I think I, honesty is an, is, an, is an important thing for me. I couldn't find another guest. I'm not saying a better guest. I'm just saying another guest uh, on time. I, I've been um, just working hard to get more guests. So if you know somebody who wants to talk about leadership, you're more than welcome to, to join me and have a conversation on Friday. Um, the time is stuck, so it's 9 a.m. Central. Um, but also, Lydia came with this great topic to talk about today. And uh, to paint a picture, um, because last week in the show we talked about like kind of similar topic but to me i feel this is going to be again very different although the topic is similar um lydia you live in israel right and as i would say everybody knows but let's for sure say that mo most of the people know um there is a war going on in israel um, that's long going, but right now it's it's very uh, it's very um, on fire, <laughs> explosive, um, and the I think the um, difficult part in this world in this war at this moment for me as somebody from out from the outside is that. Um, lots of people have opinions about it and the history if you haven't investigated it yet it's very difficult it's a very long complicated yep long and complicated history in this topic which has again a lot to do with um, a topic that i talk about a lot and that's um colonialism right so that's what the people from the west do to other parts of the world mm -hmm. um and that's a, a large part um, what I understand from my research, what I understand from it, has to do with this conflict, is what happened in the past by the occupation from Western countries, and I would consider, um, you know, Western Europe as part of that. So, what we're going to talk about today, to you know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm, what I'm trying to do is to to make this careful introduction, so we don't want to have like a discussion about which is right and wrong on Israel or. The Palestinian, um, that's not the that's not the topic of today. So I'm just want to make a careful introduction. What we're going to talk about, it's your idea, Lydia, was to talk about resilience in in when you're in the midst of this crisis in this war. And of course, it's very specific. And then again, it's not because um, leaders like you and I and other people like you listening right now, we all have times of crisis. It may not be a war, but it's, we all have times of crisis. It could be like a family thing that's happening. It could be anything that's happening that really upsets and rocks your world. And that's that's where resilience is really important. So um, let's go into that. So first, I'm going to give you the opportunity to share, just, just to share what you feel with what I've just said and, how, and what you think about this topic. Yeah, thank you, Erno. Well, thank you for having me um, here. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Um, you're a great host. Don't don't think it's, you know, it's because uh, <laughs> it's flattering or anything. That's true. Uh, it's very comfortable to talk to you. And this is not an easy topic. And this is not an easy subject. And and what is going on, exactly like you said, is... is, is um, the complication comes from the uh, first that everyone has their point of view. Uh, second, the point of view often based on, uh, um, you know, not knowing all the facts and also based on what they see on media, which is in many cases is complete misrepresentation of what is going on. And this is unfortunate, and that's that's an added layer of disappointment and struggle that I have, right? Um, and you know, um, you ask about the feelings. It, it's the feel feelings or emotions are also very complex because 
just a year and a half ago, um, although my family was in Portugal, but we are Russians. And when the, the Russian-Ukrainian war started, I went through very difficult emotionally, right? I, we were not there, we were safe, we were in Portugal, far away from the war zone, but it was my country. You know, I didn't realize that before the war started, the Russia-Ukrainian war. It was my country, the country that I lived for 40 years, invaded or attacked uh, uh, Ukraine. Um, and that was, that was a terrible feeling, emotion. And it was, you know, I went through a very difficult period at that time emotionally. And then I found peace with myself. I, I, I kind of put everything in places, uh, understanding who I am, because my identity was shattered. You know, some part of me was taken away. Um, I had difficulty to say I'm Russian for a half a year or so, like, because I didn't know it was both internal and external threat. Like, I didn't know how people would react and I didn't know I didn't know how I would feel when I say I'm Russian. I felt I felt ashamed. So it took me some time to stop being ashamed because, you know, because it's not Russia, you know, I don't want to go there. But anyway, and then just a year and a half later, um, I <laughs> we ended up in the middle of it. Now, Israel is a small country. Physically, we not. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just to sure, give people sure. an impression. So why did you move from... Right. Portugal to Israel. Because of the war, because of the Russia Ukrainian war. Um, and when, when did you move? Last August. So just a year ago. We had to move the visa and, you know, the, the work, the visa. The, basically, we had to. That was not by choice, right? Um, then why did you choose Israel? Well, because that was an easy option in terms of both financially and uh, uh, logistically. I'm, my parents live here, I'm Jew, um, so we could come and we could receive a passport in two weeks. I don't think there are any other country in the world that would welcome Russians and give them passport. You know, forget about passport visa, you know, that was the situation for us in Portugal. So it was stressful, the move and everything. and. I think I only kind of come down from the whole um, chaos of packing, moving, unpacking, um, and kind of settling uh, uh, here. And Israel is very immigrant friendly um, place compared to Portugal, uh, compared to probably a lot of other countries. So. Um, and there are a lot of friends and relatives who had to move as well, who moved long time ago and who had to move because of the Russia-Ukraine war. So, and we, I, I just, I just, you know, calmed down. I just started to relax from uh, the chaos of the move and everything. And then this happened. And again, we live in a relatively safe, safe place, I would say relatively in terms of physical safety. Um, but how far really, away is how far is the the hotspots of the war from? Uh, I don't know, hundred kilometers, three hundred kilometers, like probably maybe less. I, I'm bad with distance, but it's you know Israel is a small country, so um, it's probably six hours the, 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 from the north to the south. I mean, it's, it's a small country and it's a small community, right? Um, so, and it's, it's everywhere, obviously, because what happened is like, it's not just the war, it's, it's the whole thing that happens on 7th October. It's still, uh, uh, we still, process in this i mean the, the israel the society and they're uh, uh, the hostages um they're everywhere you go to um you go to supermarket the pictures are there you open internet they're there the cars are going by the pictures are there um and you see you see babies you see children you, you just start get emotional you start to cry because it all comes back you know 
so it's it's kind of we cannot ex escape it i guess uh, um so it's the, this this the, the air is thick with grief uh with anger with hope with like very very complex feelings you know I'm just going to sit with stillness for a moment. Sure. I think the um, the interesting part now for this conversation is so with all this going on, and you are part of the um, Better Humans core team. We work together. Um, but with all this going on, how do you keep sanity? Um, yeah. Um, it's difficult. Let me be like honest. People around me, I see people around me crumble. Like they, they just fail. Um, they, they, they're not able to function. You know, the, the, the anxiety, the fear, the, 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 the emotion that too, too much for them. Um, so they're not able to do uh, what they used to do, right? And they seek help, and there is a lot of help, and you know. When I think about my myself. Maybe it's because, you know, I'm trying again as part of better humans, as part of being a coach, as part of someone who studied resilience and optimism for a long time, like six years. I think because I went through this kind of Russia-Ukrainian war uh, uh, situation, you know, this is now the second time. So this is not the first time. So I think maybe, maybe it helps. You know, um, because it's you know what what is what is so difficult like the, how you process, how you still believe in humanity when you see people do these things. Like this is one of the questions that just kept coming at me last time. Now this time it came back the same because you know you understand why. But I already processed that now. I, so maybe my pathways, the neural pathways, I already were already there, right? I, I already went through that route, and I chose to believe, and I chose to hope that we can overcome this. So one thing, maybe because you know this is not the first time for me. Um, secondly, as I mentioned, because I know the theory, right? I know, I've read about it, I study about, it, I even teach, uh, uh, I taught a course on resilience, on optimism. So I, you know, sometimes I just make myself do things, even when I don't believe, even when I, I don't have the mood, when I, I don't have I feel I think I don't have the strength. I say, well, I just do them mechanically. So I make myself do things because I know that they will help. I believe I, I I know from this, you know, from the theory that they work. I need to I need to do the same things as I do as if nothing's going on. Make my bed, prepare a, a breakfast or lunch for my family. Uh, you know, go to shower, you know, basic things. But when I do them, I, I, I feel grounded. I feel control because lose of control. I think this is the big, one of the biggest things in such situations. Like you don't know what's going to happen. So all you do is you just scroll, 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 scroll. You just watch news. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Because this uncertainty just killing you. Um, so, and you feel you can't do anything about it, right? You know, the only thing, so 
you can do is kind of get into the army and go and, and do something. But that's, you know, that's not what I'm going to do. So I need to gain control otherwise. And that, that's what I do through the, the, the things. And I think it's easier for me because I know how they work, right? So I know the theory. I just make myself do these things and they help. Do you yeah. want to continue? No, it's okay. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> I've been um, a couple of things that I, I I thought when you were, were saying this uh, when you talked about these people that crumble. Um, what what we see in research is that when uh, people are ex under extreme stress, their thinking changes right so their iq drops with 10 to 15 points um so this is this is well-known research but mostly referred to when we are in stress of money when we don't have we don't we don't have enough money so we can't take care of our family for oh. example that's a really stressful moment where we lose our, our thoughts we lose a way of thinking and what you just described um is that taking action doing the things is it is making a difference and you hear that coming up all the time when we talk about um yeah getting out of a rut is that but but doing small things and changing and do and taking action this is actually also what i heard a lot on a different type of crisis but still for me also very important when we talk about climate and what's going on with nature and biodiversity and inequality. These are really huge topics. And if you, like what you just explained, you you just follow the news and you scroll through these timelines and all the time you're bombarded with this negative news of what's going on, um, emotional news, what's going on, then um, you become aware that, that how much is going on and at the same time you feel that you can't do anything about it so so that that this what you're missing is a is a is a way of thinking of what you can do about it what what action you can take so to i think it is important whatever is going on that you know what actions you can take so even if it's a small action if you do something you have a feeling that you're working on the solution it may not be the solution but you're part of the solution and that helps you to set the next step so that's what i also hear you say is not necessarily that if you um make lunch for your kids that damn it with this action the war stops but it brings back sanity in your family and in your process um so that at least uh, this part continues and doesn't go under yeah, absolutely. And and you, uh, uh, one point that I, I really wanted to mention, and I actually wanted to write about it, that um, in such situations, and the same with the global, uh, these large scale global issues, I think there are two parts. Um, one part is what we talked about, taking action, and I'll come back to it. The second part is actually accepting your um, limitations and accepting things that you cannot control and accepting your, uh, um, I wouldn't say helplessness, but accepting, you know, your humanity, you know. So accepting that things will happen if you worry about them or not. And that worrying about those things that are outside your control is only going to make you feel worse and people around you. That part is like very important. And there are a lot. Uh, uh, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a big thing and it, it, it's, it's, it's work. It's a process how to accept your limitations, how to accept things that you cannot control and stop wasting energy. And, and emotions and you know stop worrying about those things instead redirecting that energy freeing really freeing that energy into the actions that you actually can take and you can focus and uh, uh, 
related to that ability to still enjoy and have have joy in life despite the global uh, issues despite uh, uh, war it is i couldn't understand that you know I'm, I'm saying that it sounds simple it sounds obvious but it is so hard i remember uh, uh, again because i went through it back in in february 2020 I, I was so angry at people who are putting smiling, uh, 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 smiling faces on Facebook, February, March 2024. I was so angry at them. I said, how can you, how can you laugh? How can you smile? How can you have a, a, a party? You know, you're not allowed to do that uh with 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 what's going on and again that's what i'm saying in terms of i processed a lot of things at that time and it is important there is time for joy and of course there is a uh, you know there the, there are there is still a line and it's very blurred in terms of you know enjoying things and kind of showing up and you know what is appropriate and not appropriate and it's very debatable uh, i don't want to go there but I just want to say that grieving, and we talked about it at a better human meeting, meeting that it is important to have life, to keep uh, uh, having, uh, 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 allowing yourself having grief and you know, you know, sadness in parallel with moments of joy moments of being happy and not fe feeling guilty for that not feeling like you're betraying someone or something like this is this is also uh, important and that's part of this kind of living normal life i put normal in air quotes um but living a life like don't put not putting your life on on pause uh, I guess that's that's uh, that's important. Mm. I'm also thinking about the book "The Man's Search for Meaning" by Viktor Frankl. Yep. I think it's very appropriate to the situation that you're describing. <clears throat> it's a to me, it's a very important book. Yeah. Um, I feel also I know that you are not really into this but i also feel a lot of connection with the um, stoicism yeah um but to me and i'm just giving um also ideas to other people right to me for me the the realization that the most actually the, the one and only thing that you can control is how you respond to things how you how you respond everything else is, is on, on the, not on your control so it doesn't really make sense to, or, no, not make sense. It doesn't really help you to make worry about those. Yeah. And um, but what you can, and that's exactly what you do, right? So you say, I can control um, how I feel by working. And I remember also, um, right in the beginning of the start of this war, was where you, where you put a message on Facebook. And actually, we had this weekend plan where you did this <laughs> workshop, and it that was the moment when the war broke out and mm. and it was about resilience it was really i might say it was a like a coincidence but it, it was something that came together and, and it shook the world but also our world like this whole situation but the thing was um you put out a call on facebook saying so you, I, a lot of peop people ask me what can i do what can i do well give me work that's the most important thing that you can do for me right now. Because if I work, I feel I'm still sane. Yeah. I feel I'm still doing something. And I think that's important for, if you look at resilience, that that's the topic of our conversation. If we look at resilience in, cri in a situation of crisis, and that's also, I think you can take from the book from Viktor Frankl. If you, if you, if you have like control of this really small thing that you can do, right? So can be like even brushing your teeth or it can just be like taking care of lunch for your children that small thing that you can do that that's under your control that 
that's going to make you know a difference in your life it's going to make the next step easier it's going to make um it's going to help you to feel sane and that's the, i think the same thing that you can use even if it's a crisis at work if it's a crisis in your family whatever it is um by building this mechanism the system for yourself where you take action you do something even if it's just a tiny thing like lydia just described um this will this will keep you sane this will help you to go through the crisis and that's i think is the whole thing about resilience right so um, it's not about keeping control but it's at least having this small part that you can do I would like to pick up from Viktor Frankl. Uh, you know, I love this book, and um, I think it's yeah, it's it's like the number one book uh, for someone who's going through difficult times. You know, different uh, different difficult times in life. I think, like for me, um, it's 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 uh, one of the kind of books I, I would come back to. But what I will pick up, like. My work, you know, the message that you mentioned, why I put it on the Facebook and why I, I kept working, although I think everybody would understand if I if I stopped, if I took a pause, if I asked for, you know, whatever days off. But I chose to work not only because it keeps my mind uh, uh, busy, that's of course, uh, uh, otherwise, again, doom scrolling or uh, uh, catastrophizing, uh, uh, or, you know, uh, all the bad things. Otherwise, what would you do? But the other thing is because Viktor Frankl says, you know, find meaning. He said, he says, people who survived in the concentration camps, those who, first of all, they were able to find joy, right? Enjoy small things. And also he said that people who found meaning they were doing something meaningful, even in this, you know, helping. There's always someone who is worse than you, you know? So this is, I think, I, I want to kind of highlight, it's not just work, you know, because just work is kind of getting your mind uh, uh, out, but it's meaningful work. And what I do, you know, I chose this and it took me a long time to find something that actually is meaningful for me and something where I feel I'm making an impact, you know? That's why it is so important for me to keep was and still is to keep working because I find my meaning. I, I'm, you know, through that, I hope to make my small contribution to ending the war. And you're saying, you know with your small things you're not doing something but remember the butterfly effect you know we never know what small thing is going to change the 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 path of civilization i know it sounds a little bit uh you know grandiose but that's what i chose i choose to believe that by making this uh, uh, contribution, by doing meaningful work, um, we have a chance. Yeah. In the previous conversation that we had, that you and me had, we also talked about the meaningful work you did um, around COVID. Mm. And that's, I think, and we're not, we cannot repeat this part. You have to listen to the episode. I will put it in the show notes so that you can listen to that. And I think that's, that's what um, is a big part of you as I've, I've come to know you is that you find in these difficult times, always the thing to do um, where you hope that you have not hope is not the right word where you try to make like a contribution try to make something of meaning like you just described and i think that's why you are such a great example of um, this topic right resilience in this time of crisis is because first of all you've been through a number of those crises. well we all have been but you've been to one of the extremes maybe and at the same time, you've always found 
things work to do um, to be of meaning to other people. Like you just said, other people, there's always people who are worse off than you. Yeah. And if you've, if you've, if you can think of something that you can do for those people, yeah. and also that's what I like about better humans and the platform that we have coached up me with these coaches, um, these friends that have always ideas and processes and experience of helping people to to give them a better future to to help them to build a better future and i think that's that's why i love working with you uh, with kendra with the team but also with all the other coaches um and i think that's that's just so wonderful of what we do um and i was i, I don't want to forget this part because i was also thinking about the the, the what he wrote in a book was people who had hope right yeah because we talk a lot about hope in a time of crisis yep people who had hope um were not surviving because at some point something would happen and the hope was vanished was gone yep. right so so people would like for example hope that it, this will be over by christmas and then yep. christmas would be gone and they will say it, I, it's going to be going to be over by Easter, and then it were gone and then so all of a sudden the, the hope would just fade away and they would pass away they would just die because the hope was gone so when people try to give advice that you have to have like hope in this situation hope is not going to save us hope is not going to change because it, hope is something that you think will happen <laughs> without really knowing what's going to happen and but just doing this small thing that's where you have control what you can do right uh, well, I have to disagree with you on that, yeah. Erno. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, because I told you I studied these things, and the theory says hope is a big part of optimism. So, in order, an optimism is a big part of resilience. So, like, optimism is, I don't know. Uh, do you hear the fighters? These are the fighters. Yeah. That happens like, I don't know, five, six times a day. Hopefully we don't get this here. Yeah. Um. Um. So, uh, optimism staying optimistic and optimistic people uh, people sometimes confuse with optimism like the the Pollyanna sort of optimism no we're talking about real realistic optimism the, the dr. Seligman kind of uh, uh, definition optimism so optimism is a big part of resilience this is the, the not catastrophizing believing it that you in control of what you actually are in control like your reactions your actions and then the big part of optimism is hope but hope is like love um, it's a verb you know people think it's a noun love no it's not love is a verb you know it's what you do right to people who you say you love that's what counts not what you say not what you think it's what you do now hope is the same if you treat hope as a verb and you do things like if you if you you know in order like a fire consider it's like a fire both love and hope is very similar it's a fire. In order to fire to stay there and not disappear, like you said, you need to 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 bring wood to it, right? So that's what you do every day to keep it going, to keep the hope going, to keep the love going, you know. And and yeah, you you do need hope, but it's not passive. It's mm. active hope, <clears throat> right? So you keep it going by by not believing the miracle would happen you know not hoping it would be just you know i close my eyes not any you know child way you know i close my eyes and everything disappear no that's not hope that's that's ch childish kind of thinking that's that's helplessness you know mm -hmm. no in an active way um that's 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 my view on hope yeah, and it's 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 necessary ingredient because when you're hopeless that's a dead end 
you know that's that's very tough place uh to be i've been in that place a couple of times uh and that's very dark and 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 um yeah that's that's difficult place to be when you're hopeless yeah we for sure agree on that part <clears throat> so uh what i want to do for sure is uh, make sure that the here coach.me um slash lydia Chmel, if it's in you can see it but also when i put the qr code on you can just click it and just scan the code and you go directly to your profile um if you want to start thinking and maybe have a chat with lydia to work with lydia and coaching about resilience and learning about resilience and i'm gonna do something i'm not sure if it's not prepared so i'm just going to ask you do you know when people can uh, if they still want to buy the package about the workshop that you did about resilience, when they can do that? Ooh. Um, well, I, I hope. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Uh, the work that I've done and the teaching, first of all, it was all in Russian and it was a few years ago. Um, so, but resilience is a big topic for better humans coach.me and uh we are thinking of resilience uh, either a training or a series um you know definitely it feels like this is so relevant irregardless where you are the the, the world is only getting more uh, tough unpredictable changing um in all the levels so resilience for leaders resilience for human beings definitely on our agenda you know that um i'm just saying it to the listeners uh and 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 um we will we will announce soon we're definitely going to have uh, uh uh you know different versions in different forms um i think i would feel uh even more <laughs> equipped <laughs> confident uh, uh to to share both the knowledge that i have the theory and the practical uh, the practical part, you know, this is, you know, to, to make it matter. This is the, the resilience, uh, uh, goal to make you stronger, to make you more equipped for something. Well, if this not making me a more uh, knowledgeable and equipped teacher for resilience, then what it, what is this for? Again, finding meaning. I always, uh part of the resilience is fine growing from the adversity and for me growing part of the growing is finding the meaning the why you know why the suffering this is one of the questions again in my mind it's like why all the suffering you know why you know god universe make us suffer so much and my answer that i came up with that's the only answer for me at the moment is that so that we grow and we teach, you know, that's my meaning uh, of all the trouble and the suffering um, that I found. I think that is a beautiful ending of our <laughs> conversation uh, of how you think why suffering is important to all of us and how you do with it. So um, thank you for joining us thank you for listening um by monday this episode will be up on betterhumans.me and next friday and also we'll now a youtube channel right yes of course but everything if you go to better humans there's a post there's a youtube video sure. there's a, there's a uh, spotify the, the post that you can listen to just, just everything is there Perfect. and um friday next friday every next friday 9 a.m central time or 4 p.m um, Central European time, you can join in and have, join our conversation, have a discussion with us, ask us questions. Love to hear you and love to see you there. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you, Erno.